In this video, I'm going to show you how to blend two images together so it looks like there's a house that's inside this jar. First of all, I've opened both images. Here's the jar image, and here's the house. Going back to the jar image, the first thing that I'm going to do is check the levels. So over here in the adjustments panel, I'm going to click the second button over and look at the diagram of the lights and darks. I can see that the black end of the spectrum is fine, but on the white side, there's no information. The line is flat. So what I'm going to do is grab the white slider and drag it in until the information on the chart begins. So you can see that that has brightened my image up and it looks a lot better. Now what I'm going to do is click the tab for the house and I'm going to drag that tab down to separate the tabs. I'm going to then get the move tool over here in the toolbox, click on the image and drag it to the other image. So I'm finished with this so I'm going to close it. Next thing that I'm going to do is resize this image so that it will fit inside the jar. So I'm going to click it and drag it so that it line the edge of the image lines up with the edge of the jar and the bottom of the jar. Then I'm going to make sure that I have the move tool selected. This says auto select layer and the show transform control box is checked. Now I have handles around the corners of this image. So to make this um, proportionate so that the image isn't distorted, I'm going to hold down the shift key on the keyboard and drag the corner until the edge lines up with the edge of the jar. And then I'm going to click the check mark to make my changes. So now I have a problem. And the problem is that my image is not tall enough to fit the size of the jar. So what I'm going to do to fix that is get click on the um, polygonal lasso tool, which is the middle lasso tool. If you click and hold on the lasso tool and click the middle option, that's the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just roughly click and drag to cut out the sky of this image. So trace around the edges and come back to the beginning so that my beginning point and my end point touch. Now what I'm going to do is switch back to the move tool and just make a copy of this. So um, on the keyboard control C for cut and control V for paste. So now over here in my layers panel you can see that I have one copy of the sky and then there's the original copy of the house. So with the sky layer selected I'm going to use the move tool and drag this larger so that it fits to the top of the bottle. Now normally I wouldn't like the distortion, the way that the clouds look like they're stretched, but in this case, I think it makes it look like the clouds are floating to the top of the bottle. So I actually like it, and I'm going to leave it that way. But you can see that I have another problem, and that's these, this spiky look where the, top of, the cutout from the top of the house has been stretched, and I can see the clouds behind it, and I definitely do not like the way that looks. So what I'm going to do first of all is click the check mark here to make my changes. Then I'm very simply going to take layer 2 and drag it underneath layer 1. And now I have another problem. And the problem is I can see a harsh line between the two cloud images. So what I'm going to do to fix that is get the eraser tool. I'm going to put the brush, click the brush options, and make sure that the hardness slider is way over here on zero, which means it will be a soft-edged brush. I'm going to click 
um, enter to make that menu go away. Then I'm going to take this soft edge brush and I'm going to erase this line so that these two images blend together. And I think that looks good right there. So I actually want layer one and layer two to be combi combined together in the same layer. So what I'm going to do is um, go over here, click this little um, menu on the side, and go to Merge Down. Make sure that when you use Merge Down that you have the top layer selected so that the top layer merges with the one below it. Great, so now um, instead of having layer 1 and 2, I've combined them together into this layer, which is named layer 2. The last thing that I need to do is cut out the sides of the image so that it fits the jar. So I'm going to turn off the visibility icon right here in the layers panel, which is this little eyeball, temporarily. And then I'm going to go back to the polygonal lasso tool and cut out this make make a selection around the jar so that I then next I can cut out the image. So I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take the magnifying glass and I'm going to enlarge this. Get the polygonal lasso tool again and go ahead and start making my selection. So we've used the um, polygonal lasso tool several times before and you should be familiar with how it works. However, to review a little bit, you just click on one area, move the cursor down, and click again. Move the cursor down, click again, and basically trace the edge of the object that you want to cut out. When you are on a straight area, you can click far apart, but when you go around curves, you have to click close together. However, don't click too quickly, because if you double click, then it will complete your selection and you'll have to start over again. So I'm gonna, I, I messed up here at the bottom, so in order to undo my mistake, I'm just going to hit the backspace key and then go back and start start over again. And finish up along the bottom here. So I have to click close together when I'm going around the corner. But when I have a straight area, I can actually click far apart. Almost finished. And then I'm going to touch the beginning point with the end point. And when you do that, the cursor changes a little bit. You get the polygonal lasso tool, but it has a little circle next to it. So that's how I know that I'm touching the begin point and the end point. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then I'm going to push Control 0 on the keyboard, so that makes the image fit back to the size of the screen. Now, you may want to work on this for more than one day. So if you don't want to have to reselect your image every time you want to work with it, there's a really cool feature that Photoshop has. So under Select, go to Save Selection. And I'm going to name this Jar and I'm going to click OK. So let's say um, you save this and then tomorrow you want to get it out and work on it some more. So tomorrow you're going to open it up and your selection is going to be gone. So all you have to do is go to Select, Load Selection, 
click this channel feature right here and choose jar click OK and you have your selection back. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the house layer again, turn on the visibility icon and if I push delete right now it's going to delete the house image which is not what I want so I'm going to undo that by pushing control Z I want actually the outside of the image to be deleted so what I'm going to do is go to select inverse so you can see now that's flipped the selection so that the whatever is on the outside is selected now I'm going to push delete and that's what I wanted so I'm going to push control D to deselect or you can go to select deselect whichever one you want to use and now the last thing that I need to do is blend this image so that it looks like it's inside the jar so I'm just going to use blend modes over here in the layers panel right now it's set for normal I'm going to go ahead and click dissolve and then I'm going to um, now that I've selected dissolve and this is highlighted with blue I'm going to use the keys, the arrow keys on the keyboard and go through these one at a time until I find one that I like. I, I actually kind of like color burn. That's really interesting. And it brings out the the um, highlights where the light is reflecting on the jar. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through a few more and make sure that that is um, really the one that I like. Mm, overlay looks pretty good. So does soft light. So at this point, it really is um, your opinion, which one you think looks the best and the most realistic for your particular image. And it might be different depending on um, what your image looks like. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with overlay. Um, that's the one that I like the best right now. So now um, I would save this and then as a PSD so that it has the layers intact in case I want to keep working on it and then I would save another version as a JPEG so that I can put it on my website. That's it for now.